Hi friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you the parallax effect on scrolling from list of images to one single header image. Also, I will show you how to expand the image when I drag the screen. Great, let's get started. I've already imported my design from Figma using Protopie plugin, which is new. And now I will move to Protopie app. So here you can see there are two designs and I will start from the second one. And here you can see nothing is interactive right now. Uh, no scrolling or no touching effect. To make it scrollable, uh, you can use a scroll container or you can just use this group container, normal group, and then just convert on the right down panel with this scroll button which you can have either horizontal or vertical. So um, I've chose this option to be vertical. And when I uh, scroll this, you can see that now it's scrolling. Um, this button and image is not moving because I just took it out from the container area. And one tip, make sure that uh, your contain, a content, is longer than your scroll container because otherwise it's not going to work. All right. OK, so the content is scrollable now. And how can we make this responsive to the image? So first of all, I need a guide. So I'm going to use a variable with called scroll. And then we're going to figure it out what's the scroll value of this container. So I'm going to use now the tag trigger for scroll, vertical scroll. Make sure that this selected the scroll, not the Y position. And then I'm going to use the sign to assign my value to the scroll variable. And then I'm going to use this layer property for this vertical scroll. So I simply going to use the dot for the layer property and select scroll offset. So if you're curious about it, you can check out the Protopio website with the layer properties. And then you can see that it's a predefined one that gives you a current scroll value of a scroll or a page in container. So I'm just reusing it and I didn't invent any of this. <laughs> okay, so when I use this, formula and store this scrolls offset value to the scroll variable, I can turn on this bark bug mark. And now you can see if I scroll, it shows my scroll value. So I'm going to use this as a guide and make the interaction. So I'm going to now add a chain trigger and chain my verticals container for the scroll. Um, and then make the scale together with the image, which is this one. And I'm going to make this scrollable by around minus 300. So it's just there's no rule. I just scroll it until minus 300 from top to bottom. And I thought it's a good value, but you can have whatever you want. So when my scroll reaches from 0 to minus 300, I want my image size to expand from 375, which is a current size. Here you can check the width and the height is exactly the same. And then I'm going to make this expand to the whole screen size, which is around 812. So I'm going to make this width and height expand to 812. So let's check it out. Now you can see the image is scaling almost big as this whole screen size. And make sure that this expand from this top with the origin so that it expand from the top. Otherwise, if the origin is like somewhere else, you might have a different effect. Great. We're done with the first interaction. So now 
I want to make this um, image move with a parallax effect. So now I'm going to add the move trigger and also that's applied on the image. And now I'm going to make a scroll around 375, which is exactly the height of the image. And only the Y position move from 0 to minus 375. So currently the image Y position is Y. And since I'm going to move as much as this image height only, which is 375, that's Y is minus. You're moving to the negative area. And for scroll is opposite. So for scroll is 375 in the positive value. So you can see now that it's exactly moving as same as the scroll value, but that's not the parallax effect that we want. So for this effect, you want this image to move slower than your scroll. So I'm going to simply multiply two times the scroll area. So now to move this amount, you need a bit longer scroll that makes you a bit of the time difference. So when I do it now, you can see that image is moving slower. You don't have to multiply two times. You can just try anything you want. But I just wanted to show you that eventually parallax effect gives you a diff time difference when you scroll an object and item do that you want to move together. So yeah, our second interaction is done. I hope it was not so difficult to understand. Um, if you're not used to the chain uh, trigger, you can check out my other tutorials about chain effect. All right. So now, since we are ready with the first in, uh, first parallax effect, let's try out with the multiple image images. Um, so yeah. So here also, I'm gonna make this normal group. Uh, container to the scroll, also vertical, and also add a variable for a scroll to make a guidance, and then detect my, again, the vertical scroll with the scroll. Again, don't forget to, to have a scroll, not the Y. It's not going to work, which I did a lot of mistakes for that. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to assign a variable again to the scroll with a formula vertical scroll with layer property of scroll offset and turn it on my guidance. And then now you see that the scroll value is stored on this variable. And now it's a similar but a little bit different. I'm going to use the chain trigger again for the vertical scroll with the scroll. And I'm going to use a move trigger for the image one. So what is a bit unique here is you have to make sure that your image origin is center, not the top. And then uh, keep in mind that this image is slightly bigger than the frame. And if you unclip this, um, the sub layers, you can see that the image is bigger than the frame that I have. And that's the trick how we're going to make the parallax effect here. So when I move, uh, and let's say I'm going to scroll from zero position to until the end of the scroll, which is 205, I'm just going to make it simple like 200. And I'm going to keep the X position same because I'm just going to move it vertically. So I'm going to move a Y position, which is uh, currently 87.5 to the amount that is only difference of this image to the frame. So 32.5. The reason is that if I go further than this image area, then you're going to see that the image is cropping and we don't want that. So I'm going to move, which is currently 87.5 on zero position when nothing happens. And by the time when I scroll until the end point, I want this to move from the original original <laughs> position, Y position, um, plus the marginal value, which was 32.5, which is 112, 20. 
And when I do this, when I go to the bottom area, you can see that there's a time difference happening again for this first image. Um, but when I put it down, it stays. So I want this to be a little bit uh, dynamic here as well. So I'm going to add minus value from 0 to minus 200. And from 0 area, it's exactly the same here. And this time, I'm going to just minus 32.5, this marginal space, uh, instead of plus, so that it goes in the opposite way around. So now, when I do this, you can see when I pull, it moves um, around this area that, that's like the difference of the space. So, yeah, you can see that there's um, also we're using a time difference with the scroll. We, but this time, uh, we're using this marginal difference uh, from the image to the frame so that we make sure that image doesn't go like go cut or go beyond the frame. And to apply to this other images, it's very simple. You just have to copy to image 2, 3, and 4. And it's going to work exactly the same. See, the reason why it's moving or just acting the same, even though I didn't change anything, is because this frame and this image is actually having relative value based on the frame. So you can see that here the image is also starting as Y position of 87.5, also image 3. So the same Y value. And also, they have a, exactly the same height, as well as the same marginal value, 32.5. Image 4 as well. So yeah, make sure that your images are having the same value and the position, so that you don't have to customize every time. But of course, you can do it if that's what you intended. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's how you can make the multi multiple image with a parallax effect. And you can also do it horizontally. Mm, I already made it uh, the examples, but eventually you can just detect your horizontal scroll and make a guidance if you need it. And then for the chain effect, this time you can just move X position instead of Y and start the value from zero also. And until the y end of the exposition, which is 515. And then I also gave a little bit of buffer here to bounce to minus 200 exposition. And as you can see, this one also has a bigger image than the frame, which is clipped. And it starts from 130. And then it's moving this 70 pixels horizontally, this marginal area and gives this move from 130 to plus 70 pixel, which is 200, and to 60, which is also minus of 130. So basically it's the same. You just have to make sure that you are using the X position instead of the Y, and check your starting position of the scroll until the end. Yeah. So I guess that's it then. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and if you liked the video, please press like and subscribe and enable notification for upcoming videos. See you soon!